With the start of the Scarlet and Violet era, Pokemon released new rarities in the Illustration Rare and Special Illustration Rare cards. And as we've seen over the last few months, some of these cards are getting very popular. But unfortunately, due to such a large pool of cards, many Illustration Rares have not gotten the attention they deserve. So in today's video, let's take a look at 10 undervalued Illustration Rare Pokemon cards. What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. As I just mentioned, today we're going to be talking about Illustration Rares once again, but this time it's not the top 10 most valuable, it's my personal 10 underrated cards. Now it was really hard to break this list down to just 10, so I have a couple honorable mentions we're going to start with. The first one is Slowpoke from Scarlet and Violet Base. The only reason I didn't put this in my definite top 10 is because it's still about an $8 card. You know, Scarlet and Violet's a pretty cheap set right now, and Slowpoke is a little bit more expensive than I would expect. I wouldn't say it's undervalued, but it's an amazing card. Next up, we have Grafii from Paldea Evolved. Now, Grafii, I don't think is a fan favorite Pokemon. I don't think a lot of people really like it. I think it's a pretty cool Pokemon, and this is an amazing artwork that helps really capture the essence of what Grafii is. Another one from Paldea Evolved is the Sandigast. Again, I wouldn't say this one's undervalued just because I don't think Sandigast is like a popular Pokemon by any means, but it's only about $3.50. I feel like it could be a bit more over time, but for now it didn't make my top 10. And now the last honorable mention. The only reason this card is here is because the set is so new, and that's the Infernape from Twilight Masquerade. This card was like really hyped up. I think it's an amazing artwork, but the card is so new that it's hard to determine value as of now. I do think in the future this is going to be one of the bigger IR cards from the set though. All right so let's get into my personal top 10 undervalued illustration rare cards. You know I kept out some of the big ones that we talked about in the last video. Went in and chose some that I was surprised to see how cheap they are. Some cards I've picked up at trade shows and have expected to pay you know five to ten dollars for but only paid like a buck or two. Now this list is in no particular order but we're going to start off with the Hound Doer from Obsidian. Obsidian Flames. This card's actually up quite a bit right now. It's a $3 card, but it was going for as low as like $1.50 over the last, you know, couple months. I feel like with the newest set, Night Wanderer or soon to be Shrouded Fable, having a Hound Doom illustration rare is going to boost this card a little bit. I think people are going to want evolution lines if they can have it. I feel like that Hound Doom is going to be one of the better cards in that set, and I think Hound Doer is going to go up a little bit just because of that. I feel like this card will hit, you know, five bucks. I don't think it'll be super expensive by any means, especially long run. I think it's undervalued at three dollars, though. I feel like, you know, come September, October, this card is going to be like in the five to eight dollar range. Next up we have Mantike from Paradox Rift. This card's going for about four dollars and seventy cents. Not super expensive, not super cheap, but I think there's a lot of potential here. Mantike hasn't had a ton of Pokemon cards over the years. It's a baby Pokemon that came later in the generations, and there's a lot going on with this artwork. I feel like this is a card a lot of people will look back on and really want. So putting this card on the list, you know, again, I don't think it's going to be, you know, a $50 card. I don't think Mantike, you know, is that popular of a Pokemon, but I think this is going to go up, and I think this is one of the best illustration rares artwork-wise that I I've seen. Next up is one that I picked up incredibly cheap. I was very surprised by it. I think I paid $1.50 Canadian for it. So I don't even know if that's a buck USD. And that is the Lechonk from Obsidian Flames. You know, everyone says Obsidian Flames is just Charizards and the set is trash, but there's a few hidden gems in the illustration rare category. This Lechonk going for a buck 60 right now. I feel like this one's going up for sure. Lechonk was sort of a poster child for the Scarlet and Violet era. When the sets first came out, they were like really promoting Lechonk. I know there was those Oinkalone boxes down at Best Buy or where, wherever, somewhere in America. We had a lot of Lechonk cards. You know, there's a Pokemon Center promo Lechonk. There's the Lechonk in Scarlet and Violet base set. I think there's two different artworks for it. We've seen a lot of Lechonk, you know, lots of plushies, lots of whatever, like tons of different things. I feel like this card at $1.60 should be worth more. But again, I think I think the price is low just because people don't like Obsidian Flames. And that being said, I think some of the illustration rares will recover and climb up a bit once everyone gets over the whole, you know, Charizard thing. Next up, one of my personal favorites, Fido. I had to put Fido on here just because I have a Beagle. I wouldn't normally care about this Pokemon, but it hits home for me because I have a Fido at home. 
I'm collecting these cards every time I see them, I pick them up. I've been getting them for pretty cheap. It's a $3 card. I don't know if this necessarily has potential to go super high, but to me, it's undervalued. I really need this card in a PSA 10 one day. If you have one, let me know. Hit me up on Instagram, Trevor TCG, and I'll pick it up from you. On a more serious note, we've got Arbok from Temporal Forces. Again, a bit of a newer set, but this being an original 151 Pokemon, I think has way more potential than $5.50. I think Arbok eventually will be a $10 card. I feel like Pokemon has the potential to make an entire 151 illustration rare set. I've said this before in other videos. If they strategically keep doing this, like, three to five 151 original Pokemon in every set as an illustration rare with what we have in 151, there's potential that we could fill out an entire, you know, 151 set of all illustration rare and special illustration rares. That being said, I, I'd say pick these up just in case that happens. I mean, $5 and 60 cents. It's not an expensive card. You've seen cards though, like the Steelix. The Steelix is like $25 now. I feel like Arbok is a little bit more popular than Steelix. I could be wrong. Personally though, I would rather this card than Steelix. And honestly, this card isn't like the most amazing artwork, but to me, the fact that it's a tough card to pull, it's an illustration rare, it's an original 151, there's potential here for it to grow. Next up, same deal. This one's just like the Lechonk from Obsidian Flames. Same thing, I feel like the set's been overlooked a little bit. It's the Gloom. Gloom is an original 151 Pokemon, just like Arbok. Right now it's going for 350, which is kind of right in the middle. The most it's really sold for was like five bucks, six bucks. I think it's gonna recover a bit, not right now. I think later when Obsidian Flames is kind of out of stock, these cards will kind of follow suit. I think this is a really cool artwork. It's kind of got a lot going on. There's some depth to it. You know, you got the little wheels in the foreground kind of conversing about what Gloom is doing. It's a pretty sweet card, and again, it fits right in with that original 151. All right, next up, another card from Temporal Forces, and that is the Shift Tree. You know, the artwork on this card is amazing. I wanted to shout out Pokey Prophet. He has said a few times now that Shift Tree should be worth some good money. I agree with him. I think this card could be worth like 10 bucks. I think it's an amazing artwork. Better than a lot of cards that are a lot more expensive than it. Maybe Gen 3 just doesn't get as much love as I think it deserves. But Shift Tree, man, $3.20. I think this one should be going for, you know, eight to 10 bucks easily. Again, these cards aren't big money and I don't think a lot of them will ever be big money cards. Just look at the little cards from the trainer gallery, you know, even like the Jolteon, Vaporeon and Flareon aren't that expensive. I know they were pretty easy to pull. I think illustration rares are a little trickier to get because there's so many of them. But either way, Shift Tree should be worth more than $3.20 and I think it'll go up one day. Next up, again from Obsidian Flames. Obsidian Flames, you guys always say, everyone always says, Obsidian Flames is garbage. It's a Charizard set. That is true, but there's a lot of gems in the illustration rares. The next one I have here is the Scizor. I think this is an amazing card. It's probably in my top five from Obsidian Flames, and it's only $4. You know, on release, this card was going for almost 10 bucks. I pulled one right away, and I was like, damn, yo, this card's got to be worth a lot of money. Looked it up, it was like, you know, five bucks. Hasn't really seen any growth. It kind of dipped, but I feel like it will. Again, Obsidian Flames. I think there's potential when the set kind of starts selling out and diminishing. People don't care as much. And then everyone looks back at it and was like, oh damn, there's actually some good hits in here. I think that's when we're going to see these cards go up in value. And Scizor, I think Scizor should be in like the top 10 most valuable illustration rares. I think this should be like a $20 card. Maybe Scizor is not a fan favorite Pokemon, but to me, this artwork says a lot. All right, only two more on this list. I'm going to go back into another Obsidian Flames card, and that is the Ninetales. Again, this is a card a lot of people were really hyped on. Back when it released, it was going for over 20 bucks and very quickly dipped it down to like $7 and has stayed pretty consistent. About a month and a half ago, it dropped to its all-time low of like $5 and has slowly recovered. Right now sitting at $8.30. I think this is going up. I want this card to be over 10 bucks and I think it will be soon. I feel like this is another one that has potential to, you know, double in value over the next six months to a year. All right, and my final card, another one from Paradox Rift, it's the Eveltal. I love Eveltal. I have a little collection, you know, there's not a lot of Pokemon I specifically collect, but Eveltal is one of them. 
I'm trying to get every Eveltal card. I'm, you know, there's not a lot of them out there, so I have most of them. This is one I made sure to pick up right away. I didn't open much Paradox Rift, but Eveltal I had to have. Again on release, it was going for quite a bit more. It was going for like 12 bucks. Dropped pretty well instantly down to like $8 and has been pretty consistent in the like $5 to $8 range. Recently it picked back up though and it is climbing close to $10, between $9 and $10 over the last month or so. I think this one's going to go up more. It's a really cool artwork. I know Eveltal is one of those Pokemon that some people don't like. A lot of people say it's just like a flying piece of bacon, which I totally understand. The shiny one does look like a piece of bacon. But something about Eveltal, you know, Pokemon Y got me back into Pokemon as an adult. When I graduated high school and I had a full-time job and I was making adult money, Pokemon X and Y was the newest expansion. I wanted to get back into Pokemon. I got a 3DS, I got Pokemon Y, and I started opening cards with XY Base. A little bit of black and white, but mostly XY Base all the way through to Primal Clash. Then I kind of stopped for a bit and got right back into it with like Unified Minds, I think. So I took like a pretty big break, but Eveltal, you know, Eveltal for me just kind of captured a moment in time that was important to me and got me back into Pokemon as an adult. I'll always have a soft spot for this Pokemon, so a little bit biased on this pick, but I do think it is an amazing artwork. Even if you don't love Eveltal, I think this is a great card and it deserves to be up there in the $15 to $20 range. All right, guys, that's it for today's video. 10, well, I guess a little more than 10, illustration rare Pokemon cards that I think are undervalued. You know, this is all personal opinion. Go ahead and roast me in the comments below. Let me know why Fido doesn't belong on this list, but Apom does. I also wanted to say thank you to all the support on the last video. It was one of my best performing videos over the last, you know, probably three months. I appreciate it. Everyone who's new that has stopped by, thank you for subscribing. And if you've made it this far and you haven't subscribed, hit that button below. It's free. I post once or twice, maybe even three times a week. I'm ramping up the uploads here, trying to bring you guys as much content as I can make. All right, guys, I'm out of here. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.